Hello there, we're now going to discuss histograms. <clears throat> so what a histogram is, is it's a graph in XY form of a distribution of data in a data set. Basically, we're going to take frequency tables or frequency distributions and create histograms from them. The graph consists of bars of equal width drawn adjacent to each other. So it's kind of like a bar graph sort of, except the bars are next to each other. The bars still represent frequency of various categories. In this case, the categories are numeric. The x-axis will represent your data and the y-axis will represent the frequency. Histograms are used to analyze the shape of the distribution of data. <clears throat> so for instance, I have a frequency table that has exam scores, frequencies, and relative frequencies. I have a histogram that shows these exam scores. Notice the y-axis has the frequency and the x-axis contains the score. So if you look between 50 and 60, which is your first class, 50 to 59, notice the rectangle goes up to 1. That's because the first class has a frequency of 1. The next class goes from 60 to 70. They labeled my x-axis using lower class limits here. The way you label your x-axis can kind of vary based on, once again, textbook preference or or teacher preference. So 60 to 70 had a frequency of 4, notice that's what we had in our table, and so forth. So you see an example of a histogram on your screen. <clears throat> a relative frequency histogram is a histogram where y represents the relative frequency. So the y-axis will contain the relative frequency. Remember that's the percentage of occurrence of a specific data value or a group of data values among a data set. So for instance, class 1 is 60 to 61.9. We're talking about athlete heights. The relative frequency is 0.05 or 5%. We're going to do decimals in this case for our y-axis, 0.05. So if you look at your first class, in this case they use the boundaries. So they use class boundaries to label their x-axis class boundaries. They use class boundaries to label their x-axis. Remember if your, your data go to one decimal point, <clears throat> your first class boundary would be 60 minus 0 0.05, which is where the 59.95 came from. Not really important. What's important is that for the first class, make sure you draw a rectangle going up to 0 0.05. For the second class, make sure you draw a rectangle going up to 0 0.03. Third class, 0 0.15. Fourth class, 0.4, and so forth. So the rectangles represent the relative frequencies in decimal form. So consider the frequency distribution of days missed by students in their statistics class during a semester. Create a histogram. <clears throat> okay, so I have a title. I'm just going to call this Days Missed. And I only have six different data values, so there's no need to have classes. In other words, I can label my x-axis from 0 to 6. There's no need to have classes when you only have six data values. <clears throat> All right, so number of days, that's my x-axis. And then frequency. Let's do a little bit of sideways action here. Frequency goes as high as 6, so I'll go all the way up to 6 for my frequency labeling on my y-axis. 1 all the way up to 6. <clears throat> so if you look at 0 days missed, there's a frequency of 4. That means over 0, you need to draw a rectangle that goes up to 4. The rectangle should be centered over the data value 0. Over 1, draw a rectangle that goes up to 5. So the rectangle be, should be centered over 1 and go all the way up to 5. Over 2, draw the rectangle that goes up to 6. It should be centered over 2. Over 3, draw the rectangle going up to 5. It should be centered over 3. Over days missed of 4, draw a rectangle going up to 3. And then 5, draw a rectangle going up to 2. You don't need a, a 6 here. There's not anyone that missed 6 days, so it's, it doesn't need to be there. It's gone now. 
So here is a histogram, and this is a histogram where you did not have classes. You literally just had individual data values, which in this case would be number of days, 0 through 5. <clears throat> well, consider the frequency distribution of hours worked in a week by 50 college students with jobs. Create a relative frequency histogram. So in this specific case, notice that we have classes anywhere from 5 all the way up to 44 hours a week. That's how much these students are working. So <clears throat> what I'm going to do is label my x-axis. So hours worked, or just hours. My title will be hours worked. So hours is on the x-axis, and then we'll put relative frequency along the y-axis, which we'll do it as a percentage for this one because that's how they gave us relative frequency, as a percentage. All right, I'm going to label my x-axis using my lower class limit. So I'll have all the way from 5 on up. So you have 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. Still not enough to encompass all of the classes, so I now need to go up to 45. <clears throat> Next, my relative frequencies go as high as 28 per, or as high as 30 percent. So I'll do my y-axis in five, and I'll do them in fives as well. All right, so I have five. 10, 15, 20, 25, and then 30. 30 is where I can stop. My first class is 5 to 9. So from 5 to 10, because that's how my x-axis is labeled, I'm going to draw a rectangle that goes up to 4%. So from 5 to 10, we go up to 4%. You can even shade the rectangle if you want, if you like to be fancy and artistic. Second class goes up to 6%. So from 10 to 15, draw a rectangle going up to 6%. Then from 15 to 19, or 15 to 20, because that's how our x-axis is labeled, 14%. Our rectangle should go up to 14%. <clears throat> then from 20 to 24, or 20 to 25, because that's how our x-axis is labeled, rectangle should go all the way up to 28%. Next class goes up to 30%. That's our peak. This is relative frequency we're doing now. Next class, all the way down to 10% now. And then 4% and 4% for the last two classes. 4% and 4%. And look at that, you got yourself a fresh, nice, lovely, relative frequency histogram right there for you. So the rectangles represent relative frequency in this case. Once again, I labeled the x-axis using my lower class limits. So that's why the first rectangle goes from 5 to 10, even though it's really from 5 to 9. There's really no perfect way to do it, honestly. So you can construct a histogram, but understanding how to interpret it is, a, is totally important. So when graphed, a normal distribution has a bell shape. Characteristic of the bell shape are as follow, as we just discussed in our frequency table video. The frequencies increase to a max and then decrease. Remember, they start low, they get high, they get low again. The graph is symmetric with respect to the bar with maximum frequency. So pictured here, I have a nice, perfect bell-shaped histogram. You start low, you get high, you get low again, and notice everything's kind of symmetric with respect to the bar with maximum frequency. So a distribution of data is skewed if it is not symmetric and extends more to one side than the other. So we have three different types of, <coughs> of histograms that are not normal. First, there's skewed to the right, or positively skewed, or, as I learned it to be, right-tailed histograms. 
and they have a longer right tail. So literally there's a little tail that hangs off to the right with the way the histogram shape skewed to the left or negatively skewed or negative skewed is also known as left tailed. And that's when the histogram has a longer left tail and uniform means everything is about the same height. All the bars are roughly the same height. <clears throat> so let's play a little game. It's called name the shape of that histogram. <clears throat> so which of the histograms would be uniform? A, B, C, or D? I would say B because all the bars are about the same height. Next, which of the histograms is normal or bell-shaped? Which one starts low, gets high, gets low, to, low again? That would be A. Normal or most often called bell-shaped means the same thing. Part C would be what? Would it be skewed right or skewed left? Would it be right-tailed or left-tailed? We'll notice the little tail trickling off to the right. That means it's right-tailed. Statistically, the proper word is to say skewed right. Part D. Notice this little tail to the left. That means I'm left-tailed. That means I'm skewed left. So there's some logic to why they like to use the words right-tailed or left-tailed. Got the little tail hanging off to the left. Lastly, let's interpret a histogram. I'm going to give you a histogram and you have to find out some information about it. So how many students were part of the study? The study was trying to find the hours spent playing video games on weekends. So I have number of hours on the x-axis and number of students on the y-axis. How many students were in the study? We'll add up the frequencies of each of the bars. Remember the bars represent frequencies, number of students. So you had two, <coughs> three, four, seven, nine. <clears throat> so add all these together. And you're actually going to get 25. <clears throat> all right, and what is the class width? How wide is each rectangle? Well, 0 to 5, 5 to 10, 10 to 15, 15 to 20. There's a difference of 5 between each of those. The class width is 5. <clears throat> Give the lower and upper class limits of the first class. So that's my first rectangle. So like I said, the, depending on how the x-axis is labeled, it might make it a little confusing on what the class limits are. Well first, there's no debate that the lower limit or the lower class limit is 0 for the first class. It's the upper limit or the upper class limit that causes perhaps a little bit of, of difficulty. <clears throat> so the upper class limit, because the rectangle ends at 5, you might say 5. Which may or may not be right, because that might be where the second class starts. And you can't end the first class where the second class starts. So some people may also say 4. Because if you're dealing with nice pretty whole numbers, the first class will be 0 through 4, the second class would be 5 through 9. It's just the way the histogram was developed. So the upper class limit, there's a little flexibility, and your homework will represent this as such. You could put 4 or you could put 5. So there's a little bit of flexibility because sometimes histograms, it's a little confusing what they do on the x-axis. But anyway, that's all I have for you for now. So thanks for watching.